gonna be my skin. So what I've done there is I've got a strip of, I think it's, I don't know, three mil, two mil, I don't know. Tell you what it is. Might be about six mil actually. Uh, and I've cut it in half. And I've put my first piece on over the top, right to the edge, like that. And this is a 32 Phantom, brand new blading. And then I can see my line there. Uh, obviously I've got light shining on that. And just let the blade do the work, like that. And that, don't throw that away. Okay, so the way that I measured that was because I've got circumference, well, half a circumference sort of thing that way. So really, if I'd have gone to there, it won't be it, it won't be long enough. So you do one and a half times. So when I'm to there, and then half times again, and then gently lift it up with the blade. Now I know that that side is my flush side. It's my true side. Uh, so make sure that I put that onto there. And again, I'm just looking at the line like that. And I want that corner to go right into that corner. I'm just going to lay that on and just touch that down with my thumb. And then I'm going to follow the bend round like this. I'm sort of stretching the tape as I'm going along. And it is going to crease, but it's going to crease on this side, not on this side. Okay. And basically all I'm doing is just following that line round and you can see what I'm doing is I'm pulling, touching and then I'm pushing along with my thumb there. Okay, and I'm actually bending the tape to suit. And then what I can do is I can just look into the corner and push that in like that. Now, the secret to good masking especially on canopies, is turning that tape from yellow to grey in colour. I have tried to use that bendy tape in the past, but what you'll find is, whether you want to admit it or not, it pulls and it shrinks. It contracts back down. Okay, so there's an ever so slight chance of a bleed. Whereas if you put a thin strip of yellow masking tape, Tamiya tape, or the one from Hobbycraft, which isn't as good in my opinion, as long as it turns grey, then you know that you're on to a winner. And again, I'm just, I've got the knife lightly in my hand. And all I'm going to do is just nick it across there, and let the blade do the work. Uh, I have got some, Pin, pincer tweezers if I've just uh, if that's just a little bit too tight now can you see that whereas I've pulled it off and I just haven't nicked it there worst thing that you can do is just snag at it okay and with my thumb I'm pressing that bit back down and I just want to get my blade into there like that just a tiny little nick don't throw it away okay and again, we're cotton bud. Just turn that yellow into grey. Just burnishing it on. And then you know that you're good. Now for the next part, I want to go from that corner to that corner. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll use my grid as a measure. Uh, and I'm just looking over at the top. And I, I want to get it as close as I can so that I'm not wasting any don't really want to waste masking tape because at the end of the door end of the day it's a single use now this this is my straight edge on this side as you can see so I need to make sure that when I pick that tape up this side is the straight edge so I don't want to put it there because that's my cut side what I can do is I can turn my canopy upside down like that <coughs> excuse me and with my pinky there, what I'm doing is I'm touching my thumb and that gives me that pivotal point there. Okay. And what I want to do is I just want to lay it onto the line like that. 
Now I'm not going to push it down. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure right, that that tape is in exactly the right place where I want it. Just get a little press and I can see that line there and it's following my tape. Then with my pinch tweezers, I'm going to pull it like this. Okay, and just make sure it's on. Now you can see that that tape is yellow and you can also see that I've got some overhang there right now again what you can do is obviously you can just cut that to follow the line however what I much prefer to do is get a pair of scissors and just peel that back like that and I'm just bending it over there okay just like that just to make a little crease and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it back up I can see my line I'm going to trim the tape pull it back a little bit more Mark give yourself a little bit of a little bit of wiggle room mate and then on that crease I'm going to give it a snip now because I'm still on that line there I am good to go and I know that once I've done that now the tape is yellow, I'm hoping that you're on camera and what I want to do is I want to just give it a pressured I don't want to crack my canopy I just want to give it a pressured push ok, like that and then same for the other side so that is me cut side as you can see so that far side, that's my that's my true side, the edge of the tape and I have to remember that because now that cut side needs to go on this side of the canopy and again I'm using my pinky and I'm just touching my canopy there I've got my finger underneath and I'm looking okay and with my thumb, my thumb is going to be the critical part in this I want to get my blade a little bit further down now you can see that the tape is curved there and actually for this exercise it's curved just a little bit too much okay what I could do with doing really is getting getting that tape a little bit straighter like that okay I'm just going to touch it there with my blade I know that that's my true side still okay and hopefully that's going to give me a little bit better I want to touch that corner like that and once I've actually got that corner once I've got that corner to meet that corner I can look up and I can just get my tweezers and I can put it on and lift it off like that once I'm happy that that's okay Again, I'm looking at my line. I'm just going to double check that as we measure twice and cut once. And I am actually going to just lift that edge back up ever so slightly, just so that I can get my, my pinch tweezers in like this. And I just want to lower it down ever so slightly into that corner. Okay. Once I've got that on again. I'm going to use my knife and I've just rubbed that with my thumb okay and again what I want to do is I want to fold that over like that just to give myself a bit of a line like that okay tweezers on lift it up so that I can see my can see my line quick snip not quite enough about there let's try that okay and what I'm doing is I'm just pressing on and I don't want to go all the way down because what I'm looking for I can still see that there I've got a tiny tiny little piece of overhang and the beauty of doing it this way is you can eradicate that with a nice sharp pair of scissors and 
just keep snipping at it like that until that corner gets right on the cocktail, the cocktail stick, cotton bud and again it's quite yellow so to burnish it down and to rub it on obviously got my canopy grip between my first finger and my thumb okay round like that and what that does is that gives you the perfect edge now what you can obviously do is you can either blather that in mask oil or liquid mask or whatever uh, or you can use a little bit of tape now when i tape it okay which is what i'm going to do for this exercise uh the first thing that i do is i pull it onto my grid like this right with my thumb and what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to follow what i'm trying to do is follow a line okay but what i also want is a nice clean edge like that and what i want to do is i'm going to put that to there like that that's where my line is and it's so it's uh, half half a grid there plus one plus two so it's two and a half grids so i need another one and another half so i reckon i'm just going to take it to that one like that let the blade do the work get rid of that don't throw it away so it's one two three four four and a half grids there now i've rubbed it like that and what that does is it just takes a tiny little bit of the tack off okay then i'm going to fold it back over because i want it to fold i want it to fold that way not that way just makes it all the more easy and it just straightens it out a little bit and then starting from the front then i can overlay that and what i've done there is i've done it by a half so half of that tape is on half of that bottom and then i'm going to come over like this i want to keep it nice and straight if i can like that and again i'm obviously too long by about half a grid so actually the calculations were right and i'm just going to put a little line there where it's going to fold up naturally okay now on my tape i can see the line i'm going to get rid of these bits because they're just in the way like that and then from that again i can see my line and i'm going to give it a nice snip like that and then bring it down nice and careful i'm not in a rush okay because what i don't want to do is i don't want to overlap now again that corner just a little bit too long that corner not too bad actually so again just going to lift it up like that i know where i want to snip I just need to snip it there like that and then when i come to put it down it's halfway onto that tape again like that now it doesn't matter about obviously any sort of bubbles at that side what you want to do is just burnish it back down again there's a little bit of something there stuck under that tape actually i'm not sure what it is no i don't know what it is it's actually yellow paint i've got some yellow paint on my mat from when i was painting the bang handles okay and then so I'll clear that and then yet again so it's from the edge there edge of canopy <coughs> one two three four <coughs> excuse me four and a half so to there like that lifting it off okay and again this side and obviously because the tape is curved like that uh, what i can do i can either put it half and half there onto that half right and that comes straight across or i could keep following the curve but for this instance 
I'm just going to keep coming. I'm going to come across straight like this. I'm going to get my blade. I'm going to mark it. I'm just scoring it ever so slightly. Pinch tweezers. I can see my line. Don't need to waste the blade. Don't need to waste the longevity of the blade. Right, when scissors will suffice. So if I put that to there now, look, it's half and half again. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rub it on like this. And I'm trying to get rid of as much of that grey, yellow colour as I can and turn it grey. Again, all these lines, using all my lines, and I can see this really big line here. So again, I'm going to put my tape on like that to follow my line so that I've got a nice straight edge. And what I can do is I can just leave that sat there now and I can say that's my half, one, two, three, four, put it there like that and lift it up. Okay, and then obviously I'm gonna wrap it just around my finger like that just to get it to curve the other way. Straighten up as much as I can like that and then onto my canopy now because I've halved it onto that I'm also going to put a little overhang onto the first piece that I've done which is there so I've got maybe a mill or two I'm just what I'm doing is I'm pulling it to feel the tautness of the tape like this okay down to there and then again i'm going to look angle my tape i'm going to do that lift it back off get my scissors so that i'm not wasting the blade <clears throat> find it I'm, I'm always using uh, a, a finger just to an extra finger sort of thing just to so at that one, look, what I've done is I've got my finger on the edge of my blade there. And what that does is it lets me, it lets you have a pivotal motion. Okay, and people that do small paint detail, they will know how important that is to have that. So a little snip, a little bit more, I can see my line, I can still see my line. So there you go. And now we can come back on with cotton bud, burnish it down. And that should be absolutely perfect. So you can see the yellow there. That's the overlap that I've got. And you can see the yellow down at the bottom. Okay. And then I'm looking at the thickness of this. I'm looking at the thickness of this. And then obviously I've got a thinner tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to offer it up on inside. And I've got one eye shut. And it's just not quite wide enough which is fair enough. So one, two, three, four and a half. So I reckon if I come to round about there. Okay. As cheap as tape is, it is, it is a one deal wonder. Once you've used it, pretty much no good. Okay, so there's absolutely no point in wasting it. You might as well use your grid as much as you can to help you straightening it out look okay and then half onto there half onto there and if I start there like that and what I'm doing is I'm pulling it and stretching it and I can see that I've got a little yellow line there that's my overlap line I'm gonna come down now if you're not comfortable with a knife you could always get a biro or a pencil or you know something basically just to make a mark and again i'm going to come across there pinch that off like that and i can see i can see my little white line going across there now and again scissors and snipping that straight down there and because i know that that's accurate i can just Keep burnishing this on like this, like that, okay, like that. Now, earlier on I said, 
don't throw them bits away. I'm absolutely right. Because it's waste not, want not. And that, using my little finger, that'll just sit in there, look like that. Lovely. And then this one, will obviously do the other side. Like that. Using my thumb just to put that down. And I've got a little bit here, look that I had on the edge of my roll. It's got a jagged edge and a straight edge. But as long as I put that jagged edge covering like that, don't sit on there. I'm gonna use my pinch. Put that to there. And what I'm looking for is just a little bit of overlap on each side, which I've now got. Got overlap on there and I've got overlap on there. Now, look here. These are beautiful little bits of tape. And you might be saying you tight, sod. Well, thing is, being tight, I don't have to keep rushing off to the model shop or looking on eBay to buy tape because I'm too frivolous with it. Because you've just seen me do that. Okay. So, edge, edge, frame it, frame it, and then first piece, second piece, third piece, and fill in the gaps. Uh, and that's as simple as that. I know that that's a one in 32 canopy, and you're saying, yeah, but, you know, try that on a, a one in 72 or a one in 144. Well, I'd say to that, go and get a mask set. You know, even I'm not that bonkers. I've just done that one in 48 Lancaster with a mask set. Uh, and I can mask canopies, and I did look at it at one point, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to have a go at that. But the more that I looked at it, the more I thought, you know what, I'm not even going to bother. I've just pass my box of bits under your nose because what I want to do is just want to get a sanding stick and even though it's not rough it will get painted that just want to give that a little rub like that just to make sure I'm just on edge no point doing on inside because the sprawl gate was on the outside I just want to be that side and again I'm letting the sanding stick do the work a little wet of my finger just to see what I'm like just to see if I can feel that raised edge obviously keeping away from the actual clear glass the part that doesn't get painted so I've got a little bit of blue towel down uh, not dipping it in clear, because is that your next question? Do you dip your canopies in clear? Uh, it depends really, sometimes I do, but majority of the time I don't. And luckily enough with this F4 Revel, it hasn't been too bad. So, tools away. Let's get tools away. All right, we don't need to work messy. So that lot in there, clean my scissors. Got my tweezers ready, got my knife ready, got my cotton stick ready. A little bit of bubble there. Right, okay, so I'm take that off. I've already got a piece there, and you know what I'm like, certainly not wasting. And then what I'm gonna do is this this line here, I'm gonna follow this line. I'm going to press it on like this. I'm actually gonna do it this way with my thumb so that I can guide it one way or other. Look, and I want it on that line like that burnish that down okay so exactly the same procedure so starting on this side edge of my tape edge of my canopy and it's one two three so yet again it's whatever it is plus a half so it's four and a half and what that does is it just makes it absolutely secure that you're all right I know what we got here, one, two, three. Yeah, we've got enough here, look, for that edge. And that far side, we'll, we'll leave that for a minute. 
that far side that's me that's me fresh side that's me true side so again i'll keep in my eye on it because i want to remember which it is okay like that and then again <laughs> always using my fingers right and right in corner there i can see corner of my canopy so what i want to do is i want to i've got a light directly above me and i can see that l shape which is down and to me that's the l shape and obviously what i'm going to look for is i'm going to put that tape right in that corner and this thumb is the one that's just going to give it that final little push which is there okay need to make sure it's absolutely bang on and it's going to start and follow the line now i'm pulling this tape i am i've got it here in my thumb but i am pulling it tight at the same time and a little bit of a rub like that and what i'm doing is i'm just bending it backwards over itself keeping it tight and keep lifting it up and making sure that i am following that edge like that because at the end of the day obviously there's some guys that say oh you know my bloody hell i can't mask canopies to save my life well all it is is when you're masking the canopy it's just about getting getting that line right isn't it and again i can see i'm just going to let the blade it's there I'll let the blade do the work like that and again not going to waste it cotton bud and turn it from yellow to grey like that and just keep rubbing it down the last thing that you want on a clear part is bleed and again I've got my tape there but what I want to do is I'm going to slice that not quite in half I'm going to do about a third I'm just going to trust my line of sight and I know that this side that side that's my true side which means that that needs to go on that side like that okay lift it up this side is my true side all right like that so true side now then we've got two lines here and it's actually playing from galaxy a12 not sure what happened there uh i've got two lines but what i need to do is i need to put that corner into that corner and this thumb this is the one that's just going to make that dock absolutely bang on i've just very very gently just lifted my finger off and again what i'm doing now is i'm holding that tape so i want to bring it round like that okay and now i'm changing thumbs now now i'm changing tack now i'm going left-handed what i want to do is i'm just following that line over the top and if you get creases on that side it don't matter because all you're doing is you're keeping the crease away from that true edge that you need like that and just pop that into the corner like that and again a little bit of a little bit of cotton bud action okay then i'm going to follow my line which is let's have a look it's there so it's there now i'm just going to bring that across take that off pop it up there because we like to keep that okay so let's turn that round what i need to do is what i'm doing is i'm using these grid lines and i'm looking at that 
Right, okay, and I've got that half of masking tape. If I follow that line up, it's halfway on. And then what I want to do is swap that for that. And I can see that it's there, out there like that. Let the blade do the work. Pop that up. Like that. Stick that onto that. Yeah. Just take a tiny little bit of that tack off. Don't need to be that tacky. Now I know that that edge, that's my straight edge there. So again, I'm going to start in that bottom corner. Right. Now, even though it's not true, it's an absolute country mile off just needed a i just needed a place to start really because then what i can do is i can whip it back off now i've got it the right way and i can find my line which is there use that thumb to get that as close as i can which is pretty much spot on to that and then again you're on about your lifting technique where you're holding it there and I'm lifting it up and I'm looking at my line at the bottom until I'm absolutely happy that I've followed the line which I have not so I'll keep taking it off keep taking it off and reapplying it until you know that it's right okay because if you know that it's not right but you're sort of settling for it if you're settling for it'll do then you are in the what's called the it'll do crew okay now will it do you know when you go to shows and you see those absolutely fantastic models and I see them as well I think Shoff, you know, look at that that's absolutely awesome how many of those guys do you think seriously when uh, that'll do how many not many I've got a tiny little gap there that I want to fill in with a little piece there I'm going to push it into place, pop it down, follow my lines, get my cotton bud, gently burnish that on like that, so it's all in a nice straight line, and then again for this side, I'm going to start it there, which is round about, get that edge of that to that, and then it's going to come so about there okay yeah those those models that you see it shows and you and you think ah the chuffing lz done that ah they're bloody and i mean some of them are absolutely fantastic aren't they and you do say that work is absolutely amazing uh, but then isn't it quickly ah uh, you sort of followed that up with i could never do that rubbish absolute rubbish the reason that you have convinced yourself that you can't do it is because you either don't know the techniques that the guys have used or you fall into the category of something that I never try and do. Okay, and I'm going to share that with you now. It's a bit of an old saying. I learnt it off a guy that I used to work with quite a few years ago and as soon as he said it, it, it just stuck with me forever okay and that saying is this if you always do what you've always done you'll always get what you always got and how true a sentence is that okay just need to nick that corner off there if you always do what you've always done you'll always get what you always got and if that means that you have to stick your neck out from time to time and learn a new technique that 
helps you get better, for want of a better word. Right, then fair play. And that's what we do, isn't it? We try new things and we learn off each other. So I didn't fall out of my mother's womb with a scalpel and a roll of masking tape in my hand. I've only been doing this a couple of years. But you, you sort of watch people and you learn from them and then you can adapt your own ways then. Uh, and you'll fall into your own routine then of, no, this is how I do it. Or I've watched this guy and although I like what he's done, actually what I've done is I've just slightly, slightly altered it to best suit me. Now you can see that we're cracking on there. And what I've got is, in fact, I'm gonna do it that way, right? So half and half, so I need to be round about there, I reckon. And again, I'm gonna lift that off half and half it to there thumb on quick swipe with thumb down you go jobs are good and looking at that looking at that should be good there lifting that off finding my space touch with thumb quick touch okay let me go again with that I can actually have a little bit more coverage on and i can see that that is not going to lap correctly. It's going to leave a massive crease. So I'm gonna do it that way instead, like that. Okay, I've got a piece there. Need to spin that round just to make sure that I've got you on the camera because I am not wasting any tape. Now, you might say, yeah, Mark, but with all those little bits, mate, you've got a bigger chance of bleed. Well, I would have if I were pouring it on with a feather, but at the end of the day, you can see I'm using a considerable amount of pressure on my thumb. That's no good. No, I can use that. That'll go in there, look like that. Okay, and then what that does, it gives me half a square there. Lift that up. And my half a square goes onto there like that. Okay. Rubbing it on, following my line, making sure that everything is okay. And that's that. So that's two done. Okay, and you can see over sides, and then I've gone over. Alright. Uh go on, then I might as well do it front. So, uh, where's my, here it is. So, I want to just nick that off, like that. Hopefully, yeah, that's been a lot better. And that side has actually already come off on the, on the sprue. Tiny little clean up with the back of my blade now, not the points, because the point is I'm using masking tape. I just want to use back of my blade there and give it a very gentle, a very gentle rub like that. Okay, same for this side, bottom of my blade, right at back where I'm not using for masking. Sanding stick back out. Now, because that's obviously a smaller piece, uh, I'm not going to use a, a large sanding stick, I'm going to use one of Phil's tiny little shims. Make sure that I can see it in light and just give it a gentle like that. Now this particular front canopy, it's got a much smaller framework on it. So I am going to have to be absolutely on the money with this one. But I've every confidence I'll be able to do it. So we've got some lads down at the club and they'll say, I can't mask canopies for shit. I'm like, yeah, you can. Just put masking tape on and follow it till I... I know, but when I cut it, yeah, well, what you've got to do is learn to minimise the amount of cuts that you do. That's how you get away with making bad cuts. 
in the tail. Right. Just gonna pull my chair up a little bit. Tools away, because I don't need those. I need that. I don't need that. That can go back into there. I can get rid of that little piece because that's just gonna annoy me. Okay, so we've got scissors, tape, canopy, cotton bud. Now that tape, that's your 10 mil. Might be just a little bit too big for this one. Let's get this one out. I'm sure I think it's six mil, you know. I think it's six mil. Okay, it's fine, edge. Because I don't want to waste it. Now then, let me have a look at that. So for this one, I'm gonna go down there, and down there, and there is a curve there. So I might have to put a bit of mask on in that. So what I'm gonna do is, let me tape laid out like this. Okay. And I've got my blade ready. Uh, and from there to there, I'm looking at about two, I reckon. So, quick nick, whip that round. Now, what I need to do for this uh, is actually slice it even thinner. So, I'm going to go a quarter. Okay. Quarter of the tape, and this edge, that's my straight edge, isn't it? Why aren't you cheap shit? Why don't you just buy some really thin tape? I need to do it because I've got blades. Right, so what I want to do is I'm going to put that up to there like that. And I'm not particularly fussed where it goes right now because I can play with it. Alright. Whether it's too long, too short, doesn't really matter. What I want to do is I want to get it onto my line as much as I possibly can by pulling it and stretching it and making sure that it's there like that okay now for this one my pinky that's my point there look and what that does is it lets me do that okay and what I want to do is I want to find my line in the light and just nick it like that let the blade do the work okay and i'll bet i can just do that all right get rid of that because you don't want that on edge of your blade okay and again making sure it's about routine this it's about there's a certain step that you've got to follow and if you don't follow it right you're gonna get a bad result which comes back to comes back to what? If you always do, da di da di da. Now for this one, I want to go from there all the way down to the front. Now, does it come to a point? Let me have a look. It does. So I can put the edge of my tape, and I can where edge of my canopy is there. I know that I'm safe to cut round about there like that okay and again i want to a right thin little slice like that and i know that that's my good edge that is my straight edge and look how thin that is i bet that's not long enough actually because i've already cut it it's not okay let's have another go so if i lift that up Okay, one, two, three, four, which is to there. Straight edge. And a quarter cut. Don't worry about these two pieces, by the way, because I've still got that to do, so <laughs> it won't go to waste. Don't you worry about that. How many cuts have I put in this bloody tape? There we go, right, so, I know which my straight edge is. I'm just going to drop that onto there, like that, and use my thumb and my finger, 
and then just hold it in place and start coming down yeah happy with that pinch tweezers and down she comes following line so i can see it on that's great stuff okay like that now then so i'm not right quite down to the bottom there i've got a tiny little triangle that i need to fill in that one that's not wide enough but that one is so i reckon if i cut that in half like that and just lift that piece up i reckon fingers look get your fingers touching if i do that and then what i need to do is put that corner like that and lift it back up so i've made the v drop that onto there like that and is that tight enough in the corner it certainly is there's very very little in terms of frame on the front of this f4 quite bizarre really but i do know that it's correct because i've been looking at some reference photos uh, that the lads on the Phantom SIG put on. So I do know that that is actually correct. That front frame is barely, barely there. Okay. And again, tiny, tiny, thin little slither of tape. What I want to do now is I'm touching fingers somewhere down that line got the front windscreen nestled onto my finger like that and I'm just looking for my line and what I want to do is I want to just tap it on like that and then again what I can do is I can start to wrestle it into place now even if I have to come across like this following my line to get that to there and then i'm not happy with that i don't know if you can see that gap and unfortunately i've not got facility to zoom in but as long as i've got one corner absolutely bang on i don't mind lifting the tape up at the original place where i started and going again don't mind that okay because rather measure twice cut once so if i'm sticking tape down if i'm sticking it down first time and i'm not happy with it then i'll send it to the corner but then i'll just peel it back off from the other side so that it is spot on what I don't want to do is I'm, I'm certainly not a perfectionist by any means but <clears throat> I do not like being in the it'll do crew I do not like that right especially if I know that I can do something just a little bit better right if I just keep trying and sometimes you just have to keep trying you don't have to buy the kit again okay filling that in now look and what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna use some little bits like that I'm looking at my grid I'm looking at that to try to make sure that I am utilising as much of that tape as I possibly can. Okay. And obviously because I've done this this way for a while now, I'm not too bad on waste. 
that is the waist that I've got off that section so far. Now I can feel my blade dragging ever so slightly and I have to be aware of that because it's one of the most important fundamental basics of masking is a sharp blade. You've got to have a sharp blade in. If you're cutting masking tape and it's dragging then you're automatically onto a fail. For that, I've repositioned that about three times just to make sure that it's absolutely cock on. And I'm just going to reinforce that. So there you go. So Kenwick line, Kenwick line, Kenwick line, and again, I filled it in front middle. All right. It doesn't need to be uh necessarily one strip and then you're shining chuffing torches underneath it and trying to get it cut absolutely right because i've seen them youtube videos as well and i have tried it and i've thought what on earth trying to try what you i'm like shine i'm holding that i'm holding a torch in my mouth i'm like oh who go on doing do you know what i mean whereas you don't need to do it like that you can do it in little pieces instead. Okay, so that is obviously that side of my canopy done. And I've got that much tape waste because I've used my grid and I've cut tiny little pieces out. I am going to leave it there because I'm uh, I'm absolutely knackered. If you've followed this video so far, fantastic. Uh, if you've learned nothing from it, apologies. If you've learned a little bit from it, that's great. And actually, if you've learnt loads from it, you've just seen what I've done, then I think, you know, for every thousand views that you get, if you'll get one person that says Mark or anybody else that's made the video for that matter, cheers, mate. Absolutely spot on. I've been doing it this particular way all this time. Could never get it right. I've just watched your video uh, and thanks a lot for that. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a canopy next and I can't wait to try what you've sort of what I've learned from you. Don't forget, I've learned from watching other people, asking questions, watching YouTube videos, and having a go and adapting my own style. All right? Uh, that'll do for now. Thanks a lot, everybody. Stay safe. Take care. See you next time. Cheers.